What is a Watts 210 valve? What does a Watts 210 valve do? So this is a long shank Watts 210. You can get these with shorter shanks where basically the threads right here come out of the bottom of this right here. I've already put Teflon on here. So this right here, well, let me back up. 40 gallon water heater right here. We're on a second floor, as you can see. And this is a condo building. So there's a very good reason to install this, but let's start with, with this. This is called a temperature and pressure relief valve right here. Typically you'll see copper coming out of this. I'll shoot across and down. And then uh, if this is in a garage, if your water heater is in a garage, typically the TMP and, and the, the copper coming off of this is a drain for this TMP. But if, if this was in a garage or somewhere with concrete, uh, you'll see a lot of guys just discharge the drain for this TMP just in your drip pan here. That's the drip pan. Uh, if this is, let's say, on the first floor, your water heater is on the first floor, and it's near an exterior wall, then code would say that, at least in California, Southern California, Los Angeles specifically, is where I'm at. They want the TMP routed uh, six inches above the floor and then to discharge to the exterior of the property and be six inches above the ground. And there's a, a multitude of different reasons as to why inspectors want that. Um, but when you're in a situation like this, where you're on a second floor in a condo, there's no possible way that you can route a TMP line to the exterior of this property and make it cost efficient. Is it possible? Yes. But would it cost a lot of money just for a stinking TMP line? Yes, it would cost thousands of dollars. Like I'm talking, I mean, look, we'd have to route it through here. It'd have to go through the floors and then we're on the second floor. I mean, where do you go from here? Because you cannot, an inspector would not want it outside on a balcony or something like that. Well, they may be okay with a balcony, I'm not sure, but there is no balcony here. You, you literally have nowhere to route this TMP. I mean, so you have a balcony here. Let's say the inspector is like, yeah, okay, go ahead. How are you getting that TMP from there to here without tearing up the floors, drilling through the floor joists? I mean, you could run it. <laughs> There's just no way. There's no way. In certain situations, inspectors may permit like a, a little giant pump, but uh, highly unlikely in this situation. What an inspector would want to see is this, Watts 210. So I already have the water off. Let's just make sure, let me make sure the gas, I'm sorry, not the gas, but yeah, this is the hot, yeah, we're good, we're good. So this essentially replaces your TMP. So let me... <clears throat> Look at this. I found this in the middle of the street. I'm not kidding you. It's a Craftsman 8-inch. Found it in the middle of the street. I cleaned it up. It was, it was in pretty bad shape, but I, I really cleaned it up nicely it's kind of like a little special tool to me now will it fit this oh it's too small huh no there we go oh my goodness all right hang on hang on i'll be right back okay A little bit of air in there. 
Okay, so this is your TMP and um, oh, I guess I should say why you want this. So let's say you leave this and you're in a condo, um, you're, you're in this particular situation and you just say, you know what, screw it. I'm going to, I'm going to discharge the TMP into the drain pan. Why is that not a good idea? Well, here's why. When water heaters heat, they create steam and too much steam creates uh, thermal expansion. And these are designed to blow off steam and water when it reaches, I think 210 degrees, it says it on here somewhere. But when the water heater reaches a certain amount of pressure and certain temperature, this is designed to pop this thing just pops and then water spews out. Prevents this from potentially exploding. I mean, I, I think I've heard of a situation with a water heater exploding maybe once in my lifetime. I think it was in a different state. I don't know. Uh, I've never seen it, never heard anybody that experienced something like that. But let's say you go out of town and you have this discharged in the drain pan here and this and your in your expansion tank here fails and this is starting to create a lot of steam and it starts blowing off you know i've seen these tmps blow off water for days so potentially you're looking at flooding your house if you were to di to, to discharge the tmp into the drain pan so that's the main reason you want one of these in this particular situation uh, so you don't flood your house. So that's that. We will dispose of that. Let's make sure everything's cleaned out here. But basically, let's put a little pipe dip on this. But basically, we just thread this right in there. Okay, that's it. So you see in, out. So the way this works, this is your gas coming in. So the way this works is you run a gas line in, and then the gas out goes back down and onto your drip tee right here. So in California, we're required to use flex supplies. So normally the way I do this is I run partially galvanized pipe. And yes, we're allowed to use galvanized here in LA. I use galby pipe. I'm gonna have to scooch this around just a little bit but here I'll pipe it up and I'll show you okay so these are will be holding gas and then I will that's gonna be on the bottom this will go thread in there like that you can run a flex line from from the gas coming out, from your gas stub out, all the way to here. You can. I don't do that because I think it looks kind of funny. And on top of that, the longer you get of those, they're very expensive. So, you know, doing it this way is much cheaper. And in my opinion, looks a little better. But you know, if you don't have enough space or whatever, you can do it with just flex lines. It just looks kind of funky. And that's pretty much it. That's what supplies your gas valve. This is the gas valve. This is basically what heats, controls heating the water heater. These are 48 inch 
supply hoses I probably should have gotten 36 but looks fine it'll work perfect my lights my light flashes like that when it's about to die but that's it water's back on okay so basically how this works is you got the gas coming in and then it goes into the valve right and then it goes out and then it supplies the gas control valve to the water heater so if the thermometer on this senses that there's too much uh, it reaches a certain temperature too much pressure whatever this thing closes off the gas flow to the gas control valve which then in turn shuts the water heater down therefore stopping the heating of the water in the tank and preventing too much thermal expansion and ultimately preventing this thing from blowing up sorry that's kind of annoying so very very uh in my mind interesting valve you rarely see these they're very rare a lot of people don't know about them um, but they work they're expensive <laughs> and uh, perfect for this particular scenario